I'm Adrian George, Deputy Director and Senior Curator with the UK Government Art Collection. It's called Government Art Collection, but it's not directed by the current government or any political party. Some people would have you believe that it's currently a Conservative Government Art Collection, but it's not, and neither was it previously a Coalition Government Art Collection. In fact, during the course of the life of the collection, it served 23 successive governments, and time and time again we've remodelled ourselves in order to continue to deliver the core objective, which is promoting British art and artists. But is the collection a British art collection? The collection consists of around 14,000 works of art in a range of media, including painting, drawing, photography, prints, video work, kinetic work, and site-specific sculpture. The majority of the collection is displayed around the world in British embassies, government buildings and residences. But in the UK, most of the Whitehall government buildings, including 10 and 11 Downing Street. Following a review, it was concluded that the Government Art Collection is the largest, most dispersed collection of British art in the world. But what is British? I'm British, but if you ask me my nationality, I'm likely to tell you that I'm Welsh. Earlier this year, I did a project in China and I was asked to give the first part of my talk in Mandarin Chinese. And I was a bit surprised to find out there's no word for British in Chinese. So that means that 14.4% of the global population don't even have a word for British, let alone a good definition of what British is. The collection includes a range of work from the 16th century to the present day, but this immediately gives us a problem the oldest works in the collection are by a group of unknown artists we refer to as the Cast Shadow Workshop. And simply because we don't know who they were, we can't be sure if they were British or not. Let's think about some artists who are quintessentially British. What about Constable? I think we'd all agree that Constable is British. Sadly, we don't have a Constable in the Government Art Collection. But we do have the less well-known artist, Benjamin West. He was born in the USA, arrived in England when he was around 25 years old, and became painter to George III. He was also one of the founding members of the Royal Academy, and you can't get much more British than a Royal Academician, can you? Marcus Gehertz the Younger painted portraits of Queen Elizabeth I. Although the artist isn't British, the subject of this particular painting makes it very important for the government art collection. We also have portraits of Queen Elizabeth II, our current monarch. Andy Warhol's images of Elvis and Marilyn are quintessentially American. His appropriation of images of Chairman Mao spoke of China of the time. And his portraits of Queen Elizabeth II are quintessentially British, and they fit perfectly within the framework of the government art collection. So where are the boundaries? Are there any boundaries? Kitai was born in the US, but he studied and spent most of his life living in the UK. So does he fall into the definition of British artist? Probably yes. Ed Ruscha is another American artist. He spent just six months in the UK working at the Royal College of Art. So that's why his works are in the collection. So this is when things start to get really fuzzy. Kuo Dawe was born in China. He studied in the UK and then retired to Singapore. His works are inspired by Chinese ink painting and make direct links now between his time in the UK and his Chinese heritage. Shan He is a Korean-born artist who now lives and works between Seoul and London. Although looking at his work, you wouldn't be able to tell that he was Korean-born. The Singh twins live and work in Liverpool and they blend 21st century popular imagery with traditional Indian miniature painting techniques. Marta Marche was born in Spain and spent nearly 20 years in the UK, but she now lives and works in Berlin. Tacita Dean is British born, but now lives in Berlin as well. Does that mean we can't show her works until she moves back to the UK? Well, that's ridiculous, of course. Tacita is British no matter where she lives. Anish Kapoor is born in Mumbai, but has lived in the UK since the 70s. Would we say we can't have him in the collection because he wasn't born here? Of course not. Britain as a nation started to be formed in the 1700s. 
It was a time when we were exploring the world and colonizing it. As a nation, we have absorbed many cultures, blended them with our own and represented them. People then choose to be part of the culture or not part of the culture of the land. Or to be more accurate, we cherry pick the bits that we like. I'm Welsh. I'm proud to be Welsh, but I'm most proud of my Welsh cultural heritage. I'm also British, but as I discovered in China, 944 million people don't know what that means. And I don't know what it means anymore. So with artists paying scant attention to nationality, the increasing permeability of cultural and geographical borders, and individuals cherry picking whatever they feel most connected to from whatever culture, whether part of their heritage or not, who determines what British art is?